Hey, if you've, uh, if you've come to look for a tutorial on basketball free throwing, this is not it. But what I do want to talk about today is percent. Uh, sports use percent all the time to report statistics on players and teams. And uh, what we're going to do here is I'm going to try and take five shots and let's see how many I get in. All right? Now remember, I'm not, I'm not a pro at this. Two. That's pretty good. Two for three. That's even better. Three for four. Now, two shot number five, and it's off. All right. Well, that's not too bad. Three for five. Three of my five shots went in. Three out of five. This is a this is a part to whole ratio. Part of the, the, the whole number of shots is five. The part that I got in was three. Percent is a comparison of a part of something to the whole thing. Three out of five would be the same as 60 out of 100. And that's what percent is, per 100, making something out of 100. Now this situation here is one where even if I got all five shots in, I'd have 100%. But I couldn't get more than 100%. There's no way out of five shots I can get six in if I'm only taking five shots. Sometimes though with percentages, you can have situations where you can have a percentage that's more than 100%. Now how is that, how is that possible? Well, let's look at that right now. Hey, I was mentioning earlier how a percentage could be more than 100, and uh, I've got a couple good examples for you here. Uh, I'm about to make some coffee and, uh, and some tea. Um, if I was to take this coffee uh, jar here, and I have a scoop inside uh, that I'm going to use to take the coffee out. If I was to fill it, let's say, that full, more or less, I've filled it to 100% of its capacity. I think that's probably about 30 milliliters is what that scoop is. But I've filled it to 100% of its capacity. It's full, right to the top. Now, if I was to fill it like this, though, if I was to have it piled up on top, now there, I don't know how much I have, but I probably have about at least 150% of its capacity. It's filled over a capacity, right? It's filled up to the top and it's filled then some. You'd need another scoop to put that extra in and now I'm spilling it on the floor, so I better put this back. Another example here you find on this, uh, on this kettle. The kettle has markings on it. Minimum 0.8 liters, 1.2 liters, 1.5, 1.7 max. If I go and fill it above as far as I can uh, before boiling the water, past that maximum line, then I filled it to more than 100% of its capacity. So first we're going to stop at the maximum. We're pretty close to it, I think. Okay, we got right up to the 1.7 line max maximum. If I fill it past there now, now, I don't really know what the kettle's going to do if I run it when it's past maximum, but I probably won't do that. Now it's way above there. It's probably like 2 liters or 2.1 liters. It's filled to more than 100% capacity. Probably filled to about 120% of its capacity right now. It's over capacity. Something that's over capacity is an example of where you can have percentages greater than 100. Now, how can we represent those? We'll look at that right now. All right, talking about percent. Now, the first example I gave you, we were shooting hoops in the gym, and I was uh, happy enough to get three out of five of my shots as baskets. Now, that is the same as 60%, because 60%, this percent sign here, what that means is per 100. So basically what that can be is, you can say, that's 60 out of 100. That's what 60% means. 60% per cent per hundred. And the question I asked you was, can you have percents that are greater than a hundred? And how would you represent those? Now, in that situation, I can't. The most I could get here is I could get five. I can't get more than five shots out of five that I take. But some situations you can have more than a hundred percent. And one of the ones that I gave you was, or one of the ones we looked at after that was having something that's over capacity. So we had the, the coffee scoop 
which was, I was guessing about 150% full, as in it was full to the top and then 50% on top of that, right? If we had our scoop that looked arbitrarily like that, we had some coffee and let's say we had this full, uh, my coloring skills here, as fast as I can, roughly filled up there. That would be 100% full if that was the scoop, but then we had some kind of piled on top of this, right? We had some piled on top of that. I don't know how much I had piled on top of that, but we had more than 100, we had more than 100%, right? The scoop itself was the 100%, but then the extra part on top, that's the extra 50%. So you have more, right? It's taking up more space than you have in the scoop. That's what a percentage more than 100 is. When the part that you're looking at is more than the whole. This would be like 150 out of 100, right? That's the amount of space you have, right? 100%, but you have more than that. It's piling over the top. Now, how can you represent this visually? Well, this is one way with a picture like this, but you can represent it maybe more in a more uh, accurate way with a percent grid. This grid here has is a 10 by 10 grid, so it's got 100 squares. If I want to represent 60% on this grid, well, I can just highlight 60 out of the 100 squares, all right? So that, that gives me 60%, right? Because I got 60 out of the entire 100 squares shaded, right? The part that is shaded, okay, the part that's shaded is 60. The whole grid, the whole grid is 100, right? The whole thing there. When you talk about percentage, you often talk about the part and the whole. And when you represent your percent as a, as a fraction, that's what you have. You have 60 out of 100. That's the part you have. That's the whole thing. Anyways, if we want to represent a percent that's bigger than 100, like 150%, what are we going to need? Because if we were to, even if we were to shade this whole thing in here, right? Even if we were to shade the rest of this in here, if we shade the entire grid in, we still only have 100%, right? So how are we going to, how are we going to do this? Well, what you do need is you need more than one grid, right? If the area of one grid is 100%, right? So if that's 100%, that one grid is 100%, then all you need to do is have part of another one, all right? That's 150%. We've got 150% of the area of one grid, right? That area is 100%, and then you got an extra 50 there, right? This is 150%. 150% represented visually on percent grids. Now we've got one highlighted here. What is that? Well, that has to be 100% for that grid, 7% for this. When you have 100% and 7%, you have 107%, right? That represents 107%, just more than 100%, just more than one whole. And I got one more picture here. These grids are smaller, but if we're assuming that one grid is 100%, what do we have there? We have 200. There's our 200. And 38%. 238%. Right? That's what that is, because it's more than two grids, so it's more than 200%. All right, and that's representing percents greater than 100 visually. And the key is that if you have a percent greater than 100, you're going to need more than one whole thing, more than one whole grid in this case, to represent it. All right, and that's it.